Glory be to God, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I feel very, very happy and deeply honored to be part of these sessions, and I want to thank God who enabled such wonderful platform, wonderful time. And these are all glorious moments, I would say, because there isn't anything like these times that uh, you know Bible has been given for free. Uh, many places you get Bible for free. You don't even have to pay anything, right? And uh, freely you can read Bible. You don't have any restrictions. Yeah, a lot of democratic uh, policies are allowing us to share the gospel, the word of God, with anyone, right? But people rejecting it's their own will. We have no offenses, no problem. We are, they're not. They are. are in, they are not our enemies either. But we continue to remember them in the in our prayers, and we love them. We love them. Right. So, but these are the glorious moments where you definitely don't get these opportunities. For example, when the tribulation period starts, right? This is exactly what we had been discussing over the past few sessions. And uh, by the way, warm welcome to this uh, series where we are talking through the subject groups of evil spirits that deceive mankind. Beloved, I had been telling this for a very, very long time that we are living in a spirit-filled world everything is about spirit dealing with spirit and we have the holy spirit holy spirit is a person and every other spirits are not equated to person but they are equated to some form of you know i would say some form of spirits that is longing to fulfill its lust its anger everything else right but the uh, holy spirit is not someone who comes inside you by force but by choice when you welcome him he comes right inside you and why do you welcome him you should be knowing that right you simply welcome holy spirit come holy spirit come i don't think he will make his way you need to meaningfully invite him yeah many people don't accept unmeaningful in invitations for example they don't talk to each other for 20 years and uh, and the other guy's uh, son is getting married and he goes and invites him okay come on let's forget the past you come and all that this guy clearly understands hey you want my presence Else people would talk about my absence there and you don't want to end up in shame. It's not to take revenge, but it's unmeaningful, right? For a purpose, for a specific incident you come, but it's not out of true love you invite. And I don't think if I were to be that person, I would, I would accept the invitation, but I would not make my presence there. Why? Because it's unmeaningful. Yeah? But he doesn't have to come and invite me with an invitation, but he just have to tell me, I'm sorry about what I had done to you. Let's forget the past and please come. Let's stay together, or let's 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 be as normal as we were before. And I would make my presence. Don't need to be an event or any occasion that such an invitation is needed. See, like that, the Holy Spirit is not someone who would come in your body that your that is your home. Um, I mean, come into your uh, body, the temple of God that is His home where he will come and dwell without you inviting him meaningfully. What is this meaningful invitation? Please refer to Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 and uh, uh, what is this? Uh, Acts chapter 18 and, uh, sorry, Acts chapter 10 and verse 18 and um, um, Acts, uh, not Acts, uh, John chapter 14, 6 and John chapter uh, 6, 14 and 16 and uh, Philippians 2, 10 and 11, all those things convey about something like Jesus is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is the way, the life and the truth. And through which you will be also in a position to confess your sins and remission of sins will take place. And therefore you will receive, receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Bible says. So there is a process that you need to follow. There is a sequence that you need to follow. And then it sounds like an like a meaningful invitation for the holy spirit to come and dwell in you he doesn't come inside you and dwell in you by force but by your choice and with all due respect and honor yeah with all reverence yeah you you have to invite him and therefore he comes you don't have to beg and plead and roll on the ground like how many people do these days come let's have fasting and prayer for 20 days and let's come and roll on the floor and shake the throne of god and all that and we will receive the anointing you don't have to do that these are all demonic methods. Why would you even shake the throne of God? Can you shake the throne of God? You, you can't even enter into God's presence without his permission. By the way, 
no one can enter into his presence without his without the name of his son jesus right otherwise you don't have entry uh, that too you have a virtual entry for now you cannot enter into his throne room um, before uh, before this white throne judgment takes place according to revelation 20 first of all understand that huh? so that itself you are defeated your the fasting and prayer itself is unmeaningful and nowhere in the bible it is written that you need to fast and pray you need to uh, you, ne you need to really really long for this uh, holy spirit anointing and all that jesus mentions about fasting and prayer because certain spirits evil spirits can never be thrown out of your uh, jurisdiction or your home or your body or your children you know getting being troubled by these evil spirits there are certain spirits which are very strong they have taken strong hold in your life or in your children's life and all that you will have to fight it out it's like a spiritual warfare and the battle for which you will need to fast and pray but jesus never mentioned anywhere you will need to fast and pray and all that believe and you receive it yeah believe that he is the lord of lords confess it reconcile with the father through repentance accept that jesus is the lord and the savior uh, who died for you and me purchased you and me for a price shedding his precious blood enough holy spirit comes but it must be meaningful right don't use this holy spirit name and anointing and all that for the sake of getting married to a female many people go and take membership in a church for the sake of uh, admitting their children in a specific college therefore they switch from one church to that that uh, denomination or congregation because they run an institution and therefore when you join that church you get free admission and all that please don't do all this so so ugly this even to hear it is ugly yeah have some respect for gospel i'm not saying you should be sticking to a specific denomination or congregation may god lead you but i'm i want to stay out of that but i'm telling you do things right in the sight of god right and who can help you the helper the holy spirit so he comes inside you by choice not by force but the spirits that we are talking here are demons and what is objective of demon i keep repeating this in every session the only objective the only goal they have us to devour the mankind they deceive the mankind devour the mankind through deception that's the right definition 1 peter 5 7 and 8 you take and read devour the mankind like a prowling lion he is hungry to devour the mankind walking to and fro back and forth across the ends of the earth that you can see in book of job chapter 1 right when god asks him where are you when i'm walking back and forth to and fro for, to, for what to do good to the mankind no to devour them <laughs> and uh, that's where the children of god listening to me uh, he is always there to fight he is always there to push you down he is always there to kill you he is murderer he is always there to destroy your deeds all your good deeds all the all your good conduct you know, all the purity that you have possessed over a period of time or acquired over a period of time yeah through your righteousness and through your piety for god and all that one evil day and one moment is good enough beloved that's it it becomes black spot on your shirt which can never be removed certain black spots or dark spots on the white shirt right that you that you might have worn on a day for example tar they leave bitumen and tar right and that tar it, it falls on the shirt first of all shirts uh, really really get torn because it's going to be very hot but even otherwise also if it falls on the shirt even give for dry cleaning it's very very tough to remove yeah likewise when the devil leaves behind some mark in your life very tough to come over that or overcome that and all that why that battle brother why don't you why don't you be a warrior from day one while you are born in a warrior's family right you are the king you are the son of you are the, you are you are the son of king of kings and lord of lords yes his name is lion of juda mighty warrior the commander of the great army jesus never ever see the, in the, the current christian world have pre presented jesus as that helpless person hanging on the cross and all that right but that's what we have explained in the truth about the cross series after his Uh, death immediately three days people read that he was in seol lying in the tomb as a dead body and all that you know how many things he did in the three days and three nights wonderful to study he went and preached the gospel to the uh, you know the to to the to, to the people and uh, i mean people in the sense who have not accepted christ according to the old covenant and those that have accepted they got a chance and they moved with them to paradise and Uh, for example the babies that are born and uh, and immediately dead or dead and born 
uh, Jesus went and preached to them and those souls also you know they travel with paradise all these things he was very busy but before all that you know what he did he crushed the head of the Satan right under his feet to fulfill the messianic prophecy Genesis 3 15 Satan was defeated first thing he did was that and he moved and he shifted that upper paradise paradise upper paradise and lower paradise Paradise and lower paradise means place of torment. That's called as hell. We are actually residing in the same place. They were having a division. But he moved that upper paradise to a different place, different spot. Nobody knows. In fact, the former place also nobody knows. But Jesus was busy doing all this. And then all the people were resurrected. Jesus was also part of it, right? Yeah. And all the people, saints who were buried, old covenant saints, were buried that includes King David, Obadiah, Malachi, Isaiah, all these guys. Maybe they, I do not know all or some or few. All were risen, uh, all were risen for sure, but very few. Uh, many of them entered into the city and they witnessed about Jesus, right? And uh, Jesus was busy designing that formula how to send the Holy Spirit and when and all that. You know, that also happens because that will be the immediate event after Jesus returns back to earth to witness him, uh, sorry, to represent himself for 40 days and 40 nights and then he will be taken into the clouds, right? And of course, Jesus was busy discussing with his father because his next role is going to be intercessor and where can I, uh, where can I be seated father right hand side? Okay, fine, then uh, this is what I'm planning to do. Uh, are you okay with that and all that? He is discussing all these things, right? And not only that, uh, a lot of scribes uh, and the researchers have, you know, uh, uh, have been conferred with uh, the Bible and, uh, you know, they have also told uh, Jesus uh, also went to the fallen angels and he spoke and the fallen angels who have accepted Jesus, they have become watchers. They can never enter into the presence of God again. They've been appointed as watchers to take care of the mankind here on earth, you know, and that also happened and uh, so many things happens. And even the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, which Jesus indicated, right? They will be given a second chance. Uh, they might get mercies and all that. Yeah, another, another belief is that he went and spoke to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and whoever accepted and rip, they would repent of their sins. They also had a chance, like how that last minute repentance that uh, thief had a chance. All these are the indications. You know, Jesus leaves behind us, uh, you know, as symbols or symbolical representations. But I'll tell you what, you and I would not get that privilege. Those are for those who have missed uh, these great uh, doctrines and the teachings because they never get a chance to hear Paul and they never got a chance to see Jesus or hear him. Today, you and I have not seen Jesus, but we hear him clearly through Holy Spirit. Oh, the, the, those people who are, would never get the chance again, they were given the chance by Jesus. He was busy doing that. What do you think? Yeah, Jesus was never a person who sat idle, not a, not a single minute. And that Jesus left behind the Holy Spirit and who lives right inside of us. Likewise, the devil is also very busy from the day Adam and Eve were created to devour the mankind. And our fight is not against the blood and flesh. Bible clearly speaks in Ephesians 6.12. And that's why you and I got to be always, always focused on what is the right thing to be done. Okay, and uh, these episodes we have we have discussed through various categorical evil spirits that roam across the ends of the earth. Jesus did not roam across the ends of the earth. What, what? Uh, they they were they were roaming for all um, unfruitful purpose and for the purpose to de you know for, for for all the destructive reasons. Jesus was Jesus on for those three days and until now for all constructive reasons. He is seated on the right side of the Father in heaven as my advocate and your advocate, as my intercessor and your intercessor according to 2 John chapter 1, uh, 1 John chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 and Hebrews uh, chapter 1 and verse 3 and Mark 16 last two verses you read, you will understand, right? Uh, Jesus is advocate. He advocates our case. When the accuser of the brethren goes and fights against our children, uh, the children of God, the accuser is not always going to speak the truth. He's a liar, right? And Jesus will advocate our case. All these things Jesus is in the process of doing. How does he get the time that you leave it to him? Or probably you can ask him when you meet him in paradise, if at all you make there. Okay. Now, what am I trying to say here is we spoke about these groups of evil spirit that roam across the ends of the earth to devour the mankind versus Jesus is seated, seated at one place, but his eyes are all over the earth to help us, to help his children, especially the believers in Christ. He says, I am responsible. Yeah, I will help you. And during the times of the need, when you call unto me, I will answer your prayer. 
before even your prayer reaches your ear you will hear my answers bible says in isaiah 55 all this prophecies are even true to this day right don't worry but at the same at the same time when you compare um, uh, with uh, this evil spirits the evil spirits also are very busy but to devour the mankind and how are we going to resist the devil resist the temptations that travels through the devil and the demonic methods of temptations is what we are teaching here and very very important for every one of us to learn this isn't it uh, we have done almost seven episodes and this is not not uh, almost seven episodes are done and this is our eighth episode and we have done, we are now dealing with the antichrist spirit antichrist spirit is very simple for by definition is anything that the devil does against the teachings of christ to devour the mankind to shake your faith and uh, to mislead you to blindfold you uh, to distract you to defocus you to confuse you to lead you into delusions all these things are the various methods and tactics right the methodological way to mislead a person right see you 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 look at any country right they will have intelligence now intelligence deploy their agents into their Uh, um, enemies uh, land and likewise they will also deploy uh, their agents into this land and what is the what is the function of this agents is to is to spy across the land and tell them what is exactly happening then they will be sending all sorts of confusions to uh, dec uh, what is it to 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 derail that uh, enemy right that's exactly what pakistan is doing against india example bangladesh and all these are you know and china entering into the territories of india right all these things why they keep doing is to defocus us to kind of uh, you know derail us and therefore you your concentration is somewhere else they go through some they they go through the back door and they attack us and all that this is the strategy of enemy um, against another enemy or this is the strategy of a person against his enemy likewise the devil is always going to use his own strategies and methods and they are not going to be the same right is very dynamic is is clever than any of the mankind bible says is cunning and is wiser than any of the mankind bible says therefore don't worry right we have the wise of the wisest with us and his name is holy spirit you don't worry about it great is he within us than that is in this world 1 john 4 4 says don't worry about it right let him use his wisdom the little wisdom god gave is with him because why he said give me some powers let me deceive and let's see who's on whose side god said okay fine take some portion but he did not give all the wisdom <laughs> a major portion of wisdom is still with god only so you don't have to be very scared or frightened at all oh he is wiser than the mankind yes he is wiser than the mankind because and you can ask the same questions and why did not god give us the wisdom you will not depend on god that's a problem with the mankind no we are so wicked never ever elevate your standards above the devil i would say devil is far better than the mankind by many mean uh, by, by uh, you know by uh, by many ways uh, and and by all means i would say now uh, uh, go to first chronicles second chronicles one first king second kings and the book of uh, uh, torah all the five books you read you will understand the character of mankind now don't finger point again see israelis are like that only no that was a case study example you and i have the same blood and flesh and the same attitude don't don't ever discriminate like that that's racism bible is not bible is against racism we are all equal before god for the throne of grace you and i would have behaved the same way if we were part of the israeli community who walked when when the god the father was walking in the midst of them in the pillar of cloud and uh, throne of fire was there and they always irritated god they led him to anger and many people were killed by god himself he sent fire and serpents in the midst of the israeli camp so it never look at them or oh, you know what kind of stigmatized people they are if you were there you also would have been one of those so never ever discount yourself from those people right by uh, by all means why have th- that respect for the devil is they are so united and they work for one objective and one goal tireless and they never give up how about christians ah huh? uh, i'm sick and tired brother how long to pray pray brother what else you have got in life ha huh? the only person who can help you is god why are you sick and tired with him and if god de- delays there is a purpose if god denies also there is a purpose why because that's called as faith and trust in god i believe in my father if he says no to it yes there is a reason if he says i will give but not now then also there is a reason why why what would be the reason that you are so so worked up with god 
He knows everything. He knows what is right for you. He knows when is the right moment to give what. So depend on him, right? And all these evil spirits, they depend on the father of lies. That is their, that is their uh, leader, uh, Lucifer. Likewise, we who, who had been formed by God, do we depend on him? I'm talking about everyone, every mankind, believers, unbelievers. 99% of the mankind have gone on the side of the devil, wrong side. Look around, open your eyes and see. Yeah, you see pubs, you see dance clubs, you see all sorts of, uh, you know, gambling centers and, uh, you know, people into drug addictions and corruption and, and murders and bloodshed and this and that. These are all the wiles of the devil, right? These are all the demonic instruments that is operating the mankind, right? That means what? They have become adversaries to God. What a shame on mankind. Should you be one of those? No. You and I have taken the word of God as that mighty weapon, armor of God. is the word of God. Helmet of salvation is the word of God. And you and I make the difference. Uh, you and I will have to make the difference. Else you don't please call yourself as Christian, child of God, son of God, servant of God, this and that. All these fancy titles, even the devil will enjoy. Good, good, good. Go ahead, go ahead. In the name of Jesus, you work for me. That's why the devil would be merrily, you know, cheering and clapping his hands. And he'll be mocking you and me. What a shame. And we don't want to be in this shameful situation. That's why these kind of sessions are very important. To understand the Antichrist spirit, whether he is dwelling in you or not. Many people have not yet discovered. I told you many times, he's not an unknown enemy. People know definitely who is Satan. And therefore, if he is going to reveal that he is the devil... Uh, you are not going to love him. Therefore, he travels as an unseen enemy because he is spirit anyway. You cannot see him. And that too, when he dwells in, in, in one of your closest relations, for example, through your wife he can travel, through your husband he can travel, through your children, through your in-laws, through your pastor, through your belief, you know, uh, co-believer at, uh, at uh, in the church or through your co-worker co at workplace, through your boss, anywhere. So of some of your closest relatives. That's why you need to not only watch over the closest relatives, but anyone whom you meet in life through relations, through interactions. And not only that, uh, he also works through mind games. He can instill fear and frighten you. Therefore, you are distracted. You move away from God and he uses that chance and he enters you enters in you probably will send an agent who will come oh brother oh is this the situation oh, come i will help you and he will take you to such a place where it will be almost like uh, you know the, the pit of the hell the bottomless pit and you will not be realizing or recognizing it why because you are in such as you are you are in such as not in that not that you are in such a situation you did you were you you were uh, not careful enough to handle that situation and god also permits because why that's the agreement between him and devil each time you go and pr protect them, that's what he went and spoke against Job, right? Oh, Job lacks nothing. You have given him good health, strength, family, wealth, riches, everything. Then why would he not worship you? Take one of those. Let's see what happened. Take other, take everything. Take everything. Take his health. <laughs> you understand? That, that's the agreement. Why? Because until you are put to some sort of, uh, put through some sort of, uh, uh, what is it? The, the, the temptations. God allows certain temptations to test your character. Yeah, even God is not able to discover the real who you are. Yeah, The devil is an unseen enemy. He travels through your closest relations sometimes. He travels through some situations and circumstances sometimes. Therefore, you need to watch over. Be diligent, Bible says. Watch and pray, Bible says. Okay. Now, in our previous uh, few sessions, we had been talking about the spirit of Judas. And Judas had a spirit. Judas Iscariot had a spirit which was completely controlled and operated by antichrist spirit why because everything that the christ spoke everything that christ spoke all that he was with him closest companion for three and a half years the fellow rejected jesus yeah i more or less i it's not that he doesn't understand he doesn't want to pay attention because he made a different choice he made up his mind some people whoever had made up their mind and they come for counseling and all that don't waste your time why because that's where you need to ask the Holy Spirit guidance. You should be able to judge a person. Don't waste your time. Some people in the name of you know you mentoring, well, they have made up their mind. You can't do anything about it. Don't waste time to talking to, uh, talking to them, but talk about them to your God and pray about it. Yeah, just stay away from such people. Don't waste your time. Yeah, so one such uh, example is Mr. Judas is Iscariot. He made up his mind and how much ever Jesus would be speaking and talking and it doesn't enter into his ears at all. Yeah, 
Judas was rightly called as the son of perdition in the book of John chapter 17 and verse number 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. Jesus says this. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition. Son of perdition, whoever are the sons of perdition or perdition or daughters of perdition, you have one character in common. You know what? You will never focus on the right things. Such people, the sons of perdition, you know what is the best way to realize? Sorry, the best way to recognize? They will always be disturbed. They will be always unstable, inconsistent. Yeah, they will talk something in mood swings. You know, they will talk something in the morning, something in the afternoon. They will never stick to one place. Always disturbed. Always seems something is lost. Worried. Or hungry for money, greedy for money and, um, um, you know, lust for sex and this and that. Always into something. And they proudly call themselves as, you know, I'm a very busy person. You're not a busy person. You're a busy body running around to do useless things. Accomplishing nothing like a dog. Have you observed dog? Especially strays. There are a lot of stray dogs here in India. All of a sudden, they'll run from one end to the other corner and that they will sleep under the shadow of a tree. Why would you run? Anyway, you have made a decision to sleep, right? That's dog. And it says, you know, it has nothing else to do in life. So that's okay with the dog. But you are not dog. You're not a five-sensed animal. God gave you the sixth sense and he created you and me in his image. You're not cheap. That was a problem with the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said. Yeah. Scripture never goes wrong. That's why you need to follow the scriptures, laws and commandments written or for our good. The instructions are written or for our good to lead us in the right way. Always pay attention, my dear beloved brother, my sister. Right? Yeah, Judas was called the son of perdition, just like the Antichrist, right? And which we read from Second um, Thessalonians uh, chapter two, uh, verses three to ten. We already discussed. Uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. But we, 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 we did not get a chance to discuss from verse number 5. And today we will do it, right? And uh, the Antichrist behavior versus Judas Iscariot behavior, we compare it apple to apple, you will see it's 100% matching. Why? Because it's the same spirit that operated Judas Iscariot, that had traveled into the body of Judas Iscariot. Yeah, but without his permission. No, no, no. With his approval. Without your approval, the devil can no way even touch your shadow. Do you know that? Be very confident about it. That's why Bible strongly tells us, John James 4, 7, resist the devil, man. Have that confidence and he will flee away from you. He can no way enter in you without he convincing you and getting your approval. That authority and dominion God has given us, especially... Through second Adam, you and I have received it. Those, I mean, I'm telling you, this authority is given to the people who have accepted the name of Jesus. Accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Huh? Not everyone gets this. People have accepted devil as their uh, Lord and God and Goddess and fine. Uh, they are already on his side. So I'm not even talking about those people. Talking about people who have accepted second Adam as their Savior. You have been given, you have been once again, uh, what do you say, the, the dominion. And the owner, uh, sorry, the dominion and the control that Adam had lost uh, have been unleashed. And uh, once again, you know, it's been given in our hands. And you and I have the authority to chase the devil. Right. And uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 to 4, we already discussed what are the habitual practices. What could be the habitual practice of a human being who are demon possessed, especially the Antichrist fellow when he travels. What could be the pro probable behavior, the probabilities we discussed? And we are going to continue on the same lines all the way from uh, verse number 5. And as we are traveling, we will talk about Judas and we will also talk about ourselves. Who else? <laughs> Judas is dead and gone, beloved. But you and I are alive. You and I have a chance, right? You and I have a chance. Like Peter, how you how he judiciously used the chance to repent and feel sorry. And Jesus came in search of him. And redeemed him. Yeah, verse number 5. Yeah, verse number 5 goes like this. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? Jesus always warned us about these and about this Antichrist and his manifestations and how he could devour the mankind. 
verse number six and now you know that sorry now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time yeah we all go through pressures you know restrained pressures confined pressures and and that he will be revealed in his own time for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work this is a very very strong statement i won't actually go to seven but i thought to read five six and for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work now people really get confused brother come on how is it possible every country every foreign land every native land wherever you are there is native land and wherever you travel to is foreign land you will have to abide by the law of that land and then how is this you're calling this as lawlessness very confusing statement and uh, i will try to explain as how it is revealed to us by the holy spirit this evening not saying that no country is operating without law but if you carefully observe the law actually the law is made by few law makers and who are those law makers <laughs> see again do not get offended okay i have a great respect for the law of my country i belong to india and we know that the legislation uh, council were formed in 1949 and in 1950 india came up with the legislation laws right based on which the um what is it the the, the ipc sections and uh, based on which uh, the judicious uh, the, sorry the judicial ju judicial laws and based on which the penal code laws and based on which the law book everything was written and on which under which india is functioning so i i will definitely not say that india is lawless country no we are abiding by law and even to this day if at all india is surviving it is because of the law but the point here is can you show me the same law punishing you know some of the top rich people some of the top looters some of the top politicians no <laughs> no okay let me take one example right i can pull this name there was a prime minister by name narasimha rao and he was convicted uh, of a case and all that and the case went on and on and actually he died before even the case could end so what is this and there was another guy um, i think both both bofers case or something like that the judgment came at the age of at, i think the fellow was like 80 or 85 years old and actually nothing happened i do not know the verdict i remember one more case actually in bopal there was a gas leak because of a company and actually the government at that point of time they make him fled the spot because people were about to kill him and all that which which is which is okay or not okay i do not know but then the case was going on and the verdict was passed when the guy was like 90 years old you know what's the fine actually they imposed on him few lakhs of rupees that's it and you know how many people died what kind of law is this so what happens is the law is something that is been written for all the right reasons there is nothing wrong with the law agreed right but there are a lot of criminal lawyers there is a defense law counsel there is a defense lawyer and there is a public prosecutor public prosecutor uh, he fights on behalf of the government defense lawyer he fights for his client and uh, the judge will decide who is right and who is wrong and if you were to carefully observe right there are 10 cases where politicians are involved business people are involved all the rowdy sheeters are involved and all that obviously you can read in the newspaper right there are a lot of cases where the defense counsel has won does it mean that the public prosecutor was a feeble guy no no but the same law book is used to find the loopholes every law has got its loophole and who makes the law law makers and who governs his law makers mr devil antichrist right it will look appear to be as if everything is functioning under the law everything is functioning according to the democracy okay everything is functioning according to the legislative council which uh, came, which came up with this legislation law of legislation uh, legislation uh, you know council which uh, which which depicted lot of laws well, well done good right and based on which lot of good things are also happening i'm not denying but where there should be a stricter judgment you will see that it's being let loose and who is going to govern all of this but at the same time 
a pickpocketer or a person who was involved in a petty case i'm not saying pickpocketing is good huh? yeah of course they deserve to be punished such people should be thrown into jail forever how can you pickpocket a person's money tell me uh, you have your hands and legs working absolutely fine to pickpocket plan for it and all that why can't you use the same hands and legs to work and earn your money man why are you pickpocketing somebody's hard earned money shame on you i'm not at all supportive of it but <laughs> such a guy will be judged appropriately when he is caught and thrown into jail and this and that petty cases and got who, who the guy who took 1000 rupees bribe had been thrown into jail but how about the guy who looted 12000 crores from a bank punjab national bank he was let loose the still the guy is enjoying his life in some foreign country and the guy another fellow vijay malaya yeah who's running some liquor shops or uh, breweries or something like that the fellow fled to london what 10 years ago <laughs> and you know the law will do its job uh, in in its course of time what course of time man 10 years to uh, you know punish a guy who is enjoying his life you should judge everybody equally right no it's not happening no then what do you call this as lawlessness <laughs> okay that's why i told you at the beginning itself hey this is going to be a very tough conversation people will agree people will disagree it's up to you but i have a tremendous respect for the law of my country and i will follow whatever law was made i will follow the rules i will abide by it i have a tremendous respect but is the law doing its job in every single case no that's what you read in the newspaper that's what you see in the public media yeah everything is like a fair judgment fair verdict okay let me ask you a simple question why some cases are getting dragged for 30 40 years tell me there are certain cases they take the fast trial fast court and uh, for example uh, karnataka government couldn't form its government it was like a hung assembly and uh, they passed the verdict uh, overnight the judges were not sleeping they were made to sit awake and overnight they passed the verdict why can't you do it in some cases like where politicians are involved where the looters like business people are involved you are not doing it right then what it is called as lawlessness man there is no balance there is no balance you you will see one statue tied with that uh, what is that with a with that black ro- robe or something like that what does it mean is law doesn't judge by the race or gender or culture or community or caste or religion is this is this really happening <laughs> check out i don't want to say anything this is actually called as lawlessness well how about let's come to the christian circles you will see one denomination favoring their own people they run some institutions of first preference to our denomination why should i pull in, pull the name shame on such people i'm telling you the truth catholic people listening to me you run catholic uh, schools if a csi fellow is coming or oh, a csi yeah actually you you get uh, second priority csi people running some institution csi yeah, first preference uh, catholic people please go stand in the last row nonsense man all right you know what you you can't even discriminate a person by religion if a hindu parent is coming with a child who's really really good at studies and he is coming and standing there and you don't even give him preference because he belongs to a hindu community where did you read all this tell me did jesus serve the mankind this way no in fact you know what only 10% the statistics says 10 or 12% of his time only he spent with jews and all those people rest of all his, of all his time he spent for the people belonging to different community jebusites they are like hindus muslims sikhs and buddhists and all that today you call various people belonging to various religion jesus dedicated his time for people belonging to different religion man he had tremendous respect and love shame on you people who call yourself as christians you know i feel shameful in fact you know what i had that biases in my heart for a very long time <laughs> but i have done with that garbage i love everyone in fact i love people belonging to other religion i have tremendous respect and love for them why because they knew not what they are doing and my heart longs and i will not force for, force myself on them why because it becomes conviction no i don't want to convict anybody i will pray for everyone wait for my opportunity and many people approached me i'm battling in sickness can you pray about it then i would speak about jesus yes it's my privilege to pray but then you need to accept him as your savior else it's useless my prayer will not work in you brother my sister my friend 
I have done that when they approach me. Otherwise, I will pray. I will remember all the people whom I know, name by name, name by name, and I pray for them. Never refrain from praying for people. Always. I love them. So what is this called? It's lawlessness. Are you operating according to the laws and commandments written in your Bible? I spoke about the native land and foreign land and the country operating under democracy, legislative councils and legislations and all that. Yeah, that is first category. The second category is even within the Christendom. How many denominations, how many churches, how many congregations, people favor all belonging to their church members first and all that. Fine. That is a little bit of, uh, you know, order and uh, uh, order and uh, uh, not discrimination, order needed. Why? Why? Because you got to be a member of that church and they have certain limited uh, functions. right? Uh, so they have certain limited reservations. Correct? For example, graveyard. If you are the member of the church, then only they can plan. For example, the graveyard and the fun funerals and uh, whatever, you know, the, uh, the marriages and all that. So for that reason, yes, you got to be a member. But I gave another example. Education is common for everyone, man. Yeah, you you have built that educational institution based on the charitable deeds coming from people who have given you know offer offerings you know um, uh, from their heart. And how is it you are discriminating that only Christians can be admitted? Why not Hindus? Why not Muslims? Not saying all schools, uh, all congregations do that, but I'm telling you, most of the congregations I've seen them. I was one of those, right? When I went for admission for my child, they're asking, bring bring certificate from a Catholic church and. Please, you will get preference. I said, I'm not going to admit my child that way. And I found a school where they admitted her based on the merits, based on her, based on her, uh, you know, uh, merits and how she qualified. And then I put her in that school and she is doing well. She's scoring very well. She's in the top one or two, three. I never pressurized my child on studies. Yeah, but when I follow the rules of the Bible, the laws and commandments of the Bible, when I, am, when I abide it, my child is blessed, man. That's enough. My brother, my sister listening to me. Let there be no lawlessness. And don't, don't abide in the lawlessness. Don't, don't get influenced. Oh, they're asking for a certificate. Let me go to the church for six months and get membership and get a place uh, or, 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 or a seat or a reservation in that institute. Or maybe you're, you're wanting, wanting to get married uh, to a boy who's very well uh, placed in the society, but he belongs to that church. Therefore, you become a member of that church and you get married to that boy. God will never bless such things. You are a person who is like a, what do I say? You're a fair-weathered Christian. Yeah. Whatever you want, you go there, achieve it, and then say goodbye to that and come back. No, sorry. You got to fix your eyes on the Lord, on Jesus, on his teachings. And likewise, do not be a partial, uh, do not show partiality, right? You have, you got to treat everyone in the same way. Your child has committed a mistake. Please acknowledge it in public. Yeah. When your neighbor's child commits a mistake, would you not go and talk about that? You know what he did and all that. Are you telling the same? No, you don't tell the same about your child. Then don't do the same. I mean, uh, I mean, then do the same when the neighbor's child commits that mistake. You understand what I'm saying, right? If you are acknowledging your child's mistake in public, do that for the neighbor's child. But then actually I wouldn't, I would say, don't mind your business. Bible says that. No? Let them take care of their children. I mean, the neighbors. Or in the worst case, you can talk to your neighbor if you have any goodwill for the child, truly from your heart. Then advise them, hey, I saw this guy, this guy was I mean, roaming around with some mischievous boys and all that. Just warning you, he's, he's actually heading towards the wrong path. Take care of him. Be gentle. Don't go and yell at him. Don't fight with your, your child. Don't immediately beat or manhandle. Just watch him over, advise him and take care of him. What I saw, I have to tell you because I love your child as much as I love my child. He's like my own son. He's like my own daughter. If that is your attitude, yes, go. They tell this as a warning, but don't kindle that father's anger. What kind of boy you have begotten, man? You know, such a rascal he is and all that. <laughs> this fellow will go with such same anger and give one on his face. What happens? That boy will get even more angry and even more aggressive. Because of you, he is going to become really a rascal. Until that time, he would never have an idea like that. Lawlessness. Partiality. Will you do the same thing with your child? No, you will cover it up. Please cover up the sins. Learn to cover up. But then, but then you can you you can definitely admonish them, but gently, gently, as much as you would handle it with care for your own child. My time is up. Actually, sorry, I have to stop here. Now, if you don't, if you practice this kind of lawlessness, who are you, brother? That's exactly what I want to tell in close. You are being ruled and controlled by 
antichrist spirit bunch of evil spirits are in you for sure especially antichrist spirit because why you're you're rebellion you're rebelling against the laws and commandments you're supposed to abide in the laws and commandments but you're rebelling rebellion heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity we appreciate your mercies thank you for revealing to us and especially today thank you for talking to us so vividly about this lawlessness as a subject and if there is any lawlessness in us please correct us lead us by your side in jesus name we pray god bless you subscribe to our channel please do not miss on any videos and please do not miss to share these videos with your friends relatives target one soul may god bless you it's your responsibility to share god's word continue to remember me and our ministries in your personal prayers thank you very much for your time god bless